you want open computers to tell you which block that creep is standing on? Perfect. Yes, have a look. Hey! Happy New Year! And welcome to this series about rails. Well, in this case, it's going to be open computers because I've got a really cool idea for a track control system, but it requires a little bit of open computers prep work first. Now, before we get into the video, I just want to point out you might notice some differences in the audio as I've got a new mic and I'm still tweaking the settings a little bit to make it sound a bit better. But, let's get started. Okay, so we're here underneath Waterview Station where we previously set up the electronics assembler to make our microcontrollers. And what I was thinking of doing in this episode is to make a tablet. Now, these aren't too difficult to make. They're pretty much the same as a microcontroller. We need, of course, the tablet case, which is what makes them different. In this case, I want to have the, a higher level of tablet. I want to have a higher level of CPU because of what I want to do in the future. But right now, we could... We could should be able to run this stuff on a tier 1, but I want to use this tablet for my control system later on. Uh, we need some memory. Shouldn't need a lot of memory. Uh, graphics card to run, of course, the, the tablet display. Some form of hard drive. Now, if you want to, you can insert this into the existing machine, and you can install the OS on it and add your stuff. But what we're actually going to do is we're going to add an, a disk drive, which will let us put the operating system on from that uh, and we also of course we need an EEPROM and a keyboard to be able to type on something. Now that should be the basics for a tablet but what we're actually going to make is we want to make one of these guys here which is the navigation upgrade and as you can see it's a pretty simple recipe except for the map. Now the way that the GPS positioning system works or navigation upgrades work in this and open computers is they're based on the map that you are working on. So if we go over here and we make ourselves up a map which is just a compass surrounded by some paper like that and we need to set it up further if we go under here and we right click somewhere let's just right click over here You'll see that it generates a map. We'll go back over here though. Quite a cool map, really, isn't it? Uh, we'll go over here. We'll stick the map back into here. And we'll keep going down. Oops, seven. Do I need to click on it? There you go. So that sets up. I <laughs> don't know what was happening there. Uh, but you just basically, to make each of the maps, you just keep putting them in. And you'll see that every time you put it in there, the area gets bigger. You go into here, and now you can see that it's, it's at the top there. And zero, 00 being in the middle, that's where everything starts from. So our positions are all relative to this map. But if we go back into here, we will then make ourselves one of uh, these navigation upgrades. I don't think I, no, so I've got to put some gold in, four pieces of gold, that wasn't helpful, water bottle, couple of microchips, compass, and our map, which we've previously made, into there, make a navigation upgrade, which is based on that map. We want to change the map later on, we can, but just putting, by putting it back in there. And of course, what we'll do now, though, is we'll head over here, we'll add that into our assembler as an upgrade, so it goes up here. And we will then compile it. So there's our tablet. Now by default, of course, it won't have an OS on it. So we do need to install OS. If you hold down your sneak key and then right click very quickly, it will bring up the interface access to back of it. If you put a disk drive in here, you can put a disk in there. Something like that. Now we can just right click and it will boot off that disk. No, it's a lot different to what we would normally do for an open computer setup. Of course, we're going to install. Which will install the OS onto the hard drive without us needing to go off and put it into a computer. We're back on the installation complete, so we're far enough in, we can reboot. 
And then I'll now boot us into the OS. Now, we don't really want to boot in the OS, we want to take this disk out first and just throw it out. And of course, doing this will reset the tablet. So if you ever break your tablet, just bring up shift right click button and it will reset it. So it will now boot in. And of course that will give us the ability to use the navigation upgrade. So if we go into here, and we go component, uh, navigation is it? Yep. Get position. It will return the position on where you are on the map. So negative, uh, negative 967 for X, nowhere close. And negative 484, nowhere close again. Oh no, 484 is actually reasonably close. About 10 off. Oh no, it's not. It's, that's a positive. So they're not really anywhere related to where we currently are on the map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write some code using this here to work out where the zero is and then be able to get us to find the, be able to work out our map coordinates. And we're back in a second. Okay, so code's been written and I've come upstairs here because it's e it going to be easier to find what we're looking for up here than what we've done below. Basically what this code does is it uses our get position here and tracks where we currently are. While it is greater than or equal to 1, it will loop around here. Now, the reason why this is done as pos A and co is because we have to find the Z position and the X position. So I just looped through this function twice and do some magic to work that way. What we're going to do though is we're going to treat this as a metal detector so that every X amount of time, it will beep to tell us we're getting closer or further away from the position we're looking for. Uh, so that's what this is doing. If pass is greater than the next beep, and we set the next beep down here, uh, we just need to we tell it how much we need to move still, or we tell us how much we need to move still, and then as long as that distance is greater than one, we're going to make a beep based on the the distance away we are is based on the the volume of the beep as well. So as we get closer to the point. The beeping will get faster and it will get more high pitch, which gives an indication of where we're going. And we keep going around, we set these, sleep for about 0.1 second, and then we set our next beep, which once again is just based on the how close we are. Uh, and then we, we start off with our X position. When we get to there, we make a little a fancy little beep. Then we find our Z position, make another fancy beep. And then we say, you've reached it, please enter the positions you're at. And we store those to disk. So let's give this a go, it's called find zero zero. And as you can see, it starts beeping, telling us to move X969. Uh, so if we go forward a little bit, which I think this is X, yes we are. We are actually moving away from it, so we need to turn this way and go along here. And as you get closer to the X position, so let's just double check it's going down, you see this, negative 800, yep, perfect. So as we get closer, of course, it will get faster. Okay, so we're getting a little closer to where it needs to be. We're now only 125 away. And you should notice it starts speeding up. And there's the pitch changing, we should be really close. We're at six now. Uh, okay, so we got up there. We now need to go a Z, need a 518. So Z of course will be this way here. Hopefully we're going the right way. 522, no, always the wrong way. So it's gonna be this way. Okay, so negative 62, we should just about be close now. Eight. Three. Zero. There you go, we made it. So let me, I'm just going to rerun this again. Find zero, zero. Okay, so we're slightly off from the X now. It is. Perfect. Okay, so when you've reached zero, zero, please enter the X position on the map. So this will be 960. 
Now what I should do, and the version that I'll have down in the description might have a little check in there to make sure that you're still at the right X position. Uh, please enter the Z position, which in this case is 10... 959. 959. And there you go, it saved that position. How's that for cool? Uh, what I might do though is probably craft a new map, because I'm not quite sure I'm happy with 1000... <laughs> It being 1,000 off, because that means it will get out of range errors quite a bit. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back over there and show you how you use this information to get the correct position. Back in a sec. Okay, so we're back here at the Wanted Use Station area, and if I type in... Where is this, which is another, another piece of code I've written. We can go over here, we say, okay, what is the block that the skeleton is standing on by holding down our, well, see how it's green there? We're going to hold down our snip key, and then the right, our spider. Remember, of course, if you let go too quickly, it'll bring, it'll reset it. So we want to hold it down for at least a second. Let go. And you can hear it done something in the background. Go into here, and it will now tell you that the block uh, is position 12. An X and 464. So 12464, which would be correct because we're we're standing on 10. And 464 is probably about right because he's standing in there. Uh, this here, of course, is the position according to the map. But if we then reset this and we go into this code, where is this? A lot simpler code than the last one. As you can see, we're looking for an event because we're looking for the tablet underscore use, which is what happens when you hold down the sneak key along with the right click and you hold it down for at least a second. It will generate a tablet underscore use. We're just looping around. We're reading our positions that were made previously. Now, if you're interested in having this as a library for your own code, leave a comment down below. I might even do it myself if I have more use for this code later on. But as you can see, we're doing an event pull just to grab all the events, and this will pick up anything. I did originally ha have plans to make it pick up other stuff, but for now, it's just doing a pull for anything. So if it comes back with a a timer event, or a redstone event, or whatever, it's still going to here. Um, and that's how I exit out. I just click, 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 uh, keep clicking, because that will generate a click event. If the event, which is A, is tablet use, we'll print out the position that we are generating. So that's our position from the tablet use and the GPS values combined together. Just those out there. And then, of course, everything that came back from B, which is the information about the block. That's all this code does. And it works reasonably well. Okay, so that gives us the code and the basic setups for what we need in the next episode, which hopefully will cover off the track control system I'm planning on putting out, and it should look really, really awesome. But, I'm going to end the episode here. If you enjoyed this episode, or found anything of use, please do hit that like button. If you like open computers or trains, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But otherwise, have a great day, and see ya!